Hi everybody, I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Welcome to the layout overview for my Monument City Terminal Division layout. A number of my subscribers asked that I do a video about the planned layout as a whole, in addition to the layout updates that I've already posted. So, here we go. Before we get into that, this is the part where I ask you to subscribe. This channel provides information about model railroading, including planning, hints, tips, how-tos, and updates on my layouts. I'm in the middle of a series of videos on building a small layout from scratch. It'll sit here behind me and is called The Grunge, so I hope you'll tune in to see that layout taking shape. Subscribing means you won't miss anything, so click the button below. Clicking on the bell as well means you'll get notified when I post new content. And as always, if you click the thumbs up to like this video now, you won't have to worry about it later. The Monument City Terminal Division, or MCTD, is a proto-freelance version of Baltimore, Maryland. It roughly models the Baltimore and Ohio's Sparrows Point subdivision during the Chessie System era. This map roughly shows the area that I'm trying to model. However, I've taken some liberties along the way that I'll explain later. Set in July 1984, July 11th through July 17th, 1984 to be specific, the layout's meant to try and replicate the sunny, hazy, hot and humid summer days of my youth. Here's the current track plan. I'll also provide a link to the track plan in the description below. We start at the western terminus of the layout, the General Motors Monument City assembly plant. For simplicity, I wanted West to always be on the viewer's left. I read somewhere that on the B&O, everything leading out of Baltimore was Railroad West, and everything leading back into Baltimore was Railroad East. So even though the subdivision traveled geographically south from Bayview Yard, it would have been considered Railroad West, or at least that's the story I'm going with. My structure model is based on the actual plant that used to stand on the west side of the harbor. This plant was demolished in 2005, but luckily I was able to get a few shots of it during a trip the year before. Some street maps I got from the B&O Historical Society also provided information on the track layout within the confines of the plant. Assembly plants require a ton of switching, and I love switching, so this seemed like a no-brainer to include. The plant is served from Penn Mary Yard. I've got a few classification tracks that I work with in the yard. Chessie also interchanges with the Canton Railroad at this location. The Canton is represented by the two yard tracks at the rear of the Penn Mary Yard. And because this is an assembly plant, the final product, of course, is finished automobiles. So the four tracks at the front of the layout are an auto rack yard for loading and unloading vehicles. The Penn Mary Yard office serves this yard. I built this scratch bill structure based on prototype photos. As we head east, the trains run under Interstates 895 and 95. In 1984, 895, represented by this work-in-progress bridge, had already been in use for a number of years. Work was just finishing at that time on I-95, but it wasn't open to traffic yet. Once I finish the 895 bridge, I'll start work on I-95 here as well. Next, we come to Consolidated Coal. I'm playing fast and loose with the timeline here, since this wasn't yet built in 1984, but... Given how much coal the Chessie system hauled, and how many coal cars I already own, I wanted to have a destination for coal. This facility is primarily served by Conrail, which was also something that worked out well. See, I grew up with Conrail, so including it seems very natural to me. Why don't I model Conrail as my main road? Well, the Chessie system paint scheme was a very popular one during my childhood, so even though I never saw a Chessie train in person, it was featured on enough model railroad equipment during those formative years that when I was thinking about what railroad to model, I thought it would be fun to model, and the more I researched the Chessie system, the more I fell in love with it. More on how I ended up modeling Baltimore a little later. Scrapyards make great industries to model, so Cambridge Iron and Metal seemed like another good choice. This industry has been in and out of various track plan iterations, but eventually I took some license. I changed both its location and the railroad that served it, and I found a nice use for this area of the layout that had been a little lacking previously. Now we cross the Eastern Avenue overpass with the sprawling Crown Cork and Seal complex in the background. I've started this background structure, but it's been sitting on my bench for over a year now. I guess it's time to get off my butt and finish it. Behind the structure are some staging tracks representing Conrail's Boston Street branch. The current eastern end of the layout is a temporary staging yard, but as I build out, it'll be replaced with a version of this distinctive bridge. This is where Chessie crossed over Conrail, and it still exists today, except it's CSX crossing over Norfolk Southern. 
It's one of only a couple of this type of truss bridge remaining in the country. A little further east takes us to GM Siding. I've once again taken some liberties and merged two prototype locations, the real GM Siding and another industrial area further west on the B&O main line. This combination allows me to have a wider variety of loads going in and out. Also in this area is Capital Cement, which was a cement distributor. Unfortunately today this land is empty. Further east again, and down on the Conrail level, will be a small version of Conrail's Bayview Yard. Following the plan around to this peninsula, I took some more license here. One side of this peninsula represents Wicomico Street. The other is inspired by an area outside of the city called Halethorpe, but in reality what's modeled here will be very different, including being served by Conrail instead of the B&O. But let's back up a step. The street running aspect of Wicomico Street is what initially drew me to that location, and honestly Baltimore in general. Back around the time when I decided to give up on the idea of a New England themed freelance railroad, I saw a Pentrex video called Street Running, and I was immediately hooked on the concept. While the video didn't feature any Chessie or Conrail trackage, it got me thinking about where I might be able to include some street running on my layout. Searching Google eventually led me to a now-defunct website called Be More Ghosts about the city of Baltimore. It had a whole page about the street running that, at one time, had been prevalent in and around the city. It seemed a little like fate. Baltimore was the home of the B&O, one of the core Chessie system roads. Conrail had a presence there, and there was street running. Baltimore was a hub of railroad activity for many years. At its height, the B&O had more than a half dozen yards in and around the city, and with the formation of Chessie System, the Western Maryland added a couple more. So I started researching Baltimore even more. What I found there was enough to keep me busy for a while. Like I said, I was looking for a lot of switching, and I found an area just southwest of the city limits called Halethorpe that was a compact industrial park with a lot of track. I also found Wicomico Street with its street running, which is on the west side of the Inner Harbor. But as it turned out, it was the Sparrows Point subdivision, on the east side of the harbor, that was a better fit for the types of industries that I wanted to feature on my layout, including the GM assembly plan. This map shows the relationship between Halethorpe, Wicomico Street, and the Sparrows Point subdivision. Trying to narrow down the options was not a simple feat. As you can see, it would be exceedingly difficult to build these into a single layout and be prototypical, especially since I didn't want to build a multi-deck layout. I decided to not even try. Instead, I decided to focus on Sparrows Point, since it would allow me to fold in Conrail and the Canton Railroad, and then use Modeler's license to fit in the street running of Wicomico Street and some of the industries that would have or could have been part of Halethorpe. I've had to reverse the layout of Wicomico Street to make it fit, and instead of the actual industries at Halethorpe, I've substituted a team track, a transload area, a transplanted national bohemian brewery, and an industry called Laura's Own which is a play on the Newman's Own brand, but dedicated to my lovely wife who loves to cook. The last element of the layout is the fiddle yard that I plan to use during operating sessions. This will represent the B&O Bayview Yard. In case you're confused, both Conrail and B&O had their own Bayview Yard. They were, and still are, side by side, but there's a pretty good change in elevation between them. While it might not seem there's much here in terms of operations, that can be deceiving. Since the focus here is on switching and not through trains, most of the jobs take a bit of time to finish. Even the small section of the layout that's now currently finished can support a three-hour operating session for up to six people. So by the time I finish everything else here, there'll be plenty going on. That's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this mental trip around the layout. If you have corrections about Baltimore, or suggestions or questions about the layout itself, include them in the comments below. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up to like it so it'll get saved to your like playlist. Plus, it helps me with Google's analytics. I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll meet me next time in the train room. Ding dong! Ruff, ruff, ruff!